Hello and welcome back to another section of this complete Mern Stack project course. In this section, we are going to learn about web sockets and how we can use them in our real time chat application for real time data transfer. And in this lecture, we are going to understand what are web sockets and how they allow us to exchange data between client and the server in real time. So before we learn how we can use WebSocket for real-time data transfer in our chat application, let's first try to understand what a WebSocket is. WebSocket is a full duplex communication protocol that provides a persistent connection between a client and a server. Unlike HTTP, which is request response based, WebSocket allows for bi-directional communication, enabling real-time data exchange between the client and the server. So, in order to understand how WebSocket works, let's first briefly understand how a client-server architecture works and uses request response approach. And after that, we will try to understand how WebSockets are different from request response approach. In a typical client-server architecture, client sends a request to the server, the server processes that request and sends back a response or an error if there is something wrong while processing the request. Now, one important point to know here is that when a client sends a request to the server, first, a TCP IP connection is established between the client and the server. This TCP IP connection allows data transfer between two connected parties, in this case, the client and the server. Now, the TCP IP connection stays open as long as the client has sent a request and response is received by the client. As soon as the response is received by the client, the TCP IP connection is closed. And this is very important to understand. The data transfer between the client and the server happens because of the TCP IP connection. But the lifetime of a TCP IP connection in case of request response approach is when the request is sent and as soon as the response is received. Once the response is received, the TCP IP connection which was opened between the client and the server that is closed. And this happens for each request. Every time we send a request from a client to a server, a new TCP IP connection is established between the client and the server. And it gets closed as soon as the response is received. So this happens for each request which we sent from the client to the server. So the key point to take here is that the TCP IP connection between the client and the server, it does not stay open forever. Okay. It gets closed as soon as the client receives the response. And this is for each request response cycle. Now let's try to understand this with an example. Let's say we have two users, user A and user B. User A is using some other client and user B is using a different client. Now let's say user A wants to send a message to user B. For sending the message, user A will make a POST request with the message data to the server. And when a request is sent from user A, from the client of user A to the server, a TCP IP connection will be established between user A device and the server. The server will receive the request, it will receive the message data, and it will create a message document in the database. And finally, it will send a response to the user notifying that the message is created and then the TCP IP connection between user A client and the server will be closed. Now here user B is not aware about the new message which user A has sent. To get the new messages sent by other users to user B, user B will have to make an HTTP GET request to the server requesting all the new messages in the response. For that user B will make a request to the server to get all the new messages, a TCP IP connection will be established between user B device and the server. Server will fetch all the messages and it will send all those messages in the response to user B. And once the response is received by user B client, user B device, the TCP IP connection will be closed. So as you can see, whenever a new piece of data is received on the server, the clients are not notified automatically. To fetch the new piece of data, the client has to make a new request to the server. And this is how a typical HTTP request response approach works. Now let's talk about WebSockets. 
in web sockets also there is the concept of http request and response but here when the first request is made by the client a tcp ip connection is established between the client and the server but in this case this tcp ip connection remains open even after the client has received the response so after the client has received the response this tcp ip connection is not closed it is still open okay it does not close immediately after client has received the response here the client initiates a connection request to the server the server responds with a handshake response establishing a web socket connection once the connection is established it will remain open and both the client and the server can send and receive data in real time data is sent in frames which can be a text or binary and the web socket connection remains open until either the client or the server closes it the server can send ping frames to keep the connection alive and detect inactivity and this is on a very high level how web socket allows real time data exchange internally there are a lot of stuffs going on but on a high level you just need to understand that when we use web socket a tcp ip connection gets established between the client and the server which remains open as long as the client or the server closes it and this allows the real time data transfer between client and the server let's understand this concept with the same example of user a and user b let's say user a sends a post request to the server for creating a new message data now when the request is sent a tcp ip connection will be established between user a device and the server and once the request is processed successfully server will send a response to user a so user a has received the response but the tcp ip connection has not closed it is still open so user a client is still connected with the server next user b makes a get request to the server to fetch all the messages and when a request is sent from user b to server a tcp ip connection will be established between the user b device and the server server will fetch the message data from the database and it will send it in the response and once the response is received here the tcp ip connection is not going to be closed it is still going to be open so now you see both client a and client b are already connected to the server now when user a sends a new message to the server again it will be first created in the database and since there is already a connection between user b and the server user b does not have to send a new request to fetch all those messages all the new messages instead once the server has received that new piece of data it is going to notify all the required clients in this case server b is going to send data to user b because this message was intended for user b so server knows that and it is going to send that message data to user b here user b has not made any new request to the server to fetch the message data instead server knows that this data should go to user b so it automatically sent that data to user b and this data transfer is possible because there is already a tcp ip connection open between user b and the server so in simple terms web sockets allows us to send and receive data in real time by keeping the tcp ip connection alive between the client and the server and we are going to utilize this feature for sending and receiving messages in real time in our chat application and in order to send and receive data in real time we are going to use socket.io socket.io uses event driven architecture to transfer data between client and the server in real time and you will understand what i mean by that practically in our next lecture in the next lecture let's understand how we can utilize this concept of web socket in our application using socket.io package so from this lecture i hope you got the understanding of how the real time data transfer happens with the help of web socket basically when we use web socket web socket keeps the connection alive between the client and the server as long as the client or the server closes that connection and since there is already a connection open between the client and the server it allows real time data transfer this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it
Thank you for listening and have a great day.